Datables, welcome to a spanking new episode of the Datable Podcast. If you didn't know what we talk about just by the name itself, we are talking about modern dating, not data science. But we could. There is some data science to all of this. We're just not numbers people <laughs> yet. Last <laughs> In week. our d- dating journey. <laughs> yeah. Well, this week we have a lot in store. I guess we are numbers people because we are talking about families of three and it's not what you think and no. we hit our 300th episode so that makes us number as people in itself three is our lucky number <laughs> 300 episodes is a big as accomplishment and I know I posted this in our community but there is a thing in podcasting called pod fading mm. which 75 percent of the two million podcasts out there fade out within the first year So the fact that we've made it to almost seven years with 300 episodes just means there's been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put into this. It has been a journey. I feel like the other day I was re-listening to one of our older episodes, Uh and I was just like, damn, we've come a long way. It didn't even sound like the same podcast. It basically was a totally different podcast when we first started. Good, because we're also right. like six years younger then yeah. and didn't have all those experiences, didn't talk to the thousands of people who are going into this. So I hope that in five, six years from now, we're going to sound totally different than we do today, too. I think that is exactly it. Like at the beginning, it was more funny dating stories and not nearly yeah. as deep, but we didn't have that that knowledge back then. We kind of needed all those stories to build on the topics that are current day. So more on this to come, but UA and I are definitely working hard to dissect all the stuff we've learned. That is one of our secret projects that we're working on. Well, and the not so secret project is our Finding Your Person program <laughs> that we are relaunching very soon. This is the place where we put all of our years of mm-hmm. experience, anecdotes, pattern recognition, data, all of it into one to really crack the code on finding that special person for you. Does this program guarantee you're going to find your person? No, because nobody can guarantee you're (laughs) going to find your person. But we've had so many success stories, even from people who haven't found their person, but who feel completely ready now. Yeah. Oh my God. Can we read some of them? Because I feel like seeing those come in on Instagram, like this, you and I had a text drag that was... This is why we do what we do because there yes. just this gives us so much joy to get messages like this. Uh, and also it's a completely self-guided program. So we also have people in it who haven't completed yet. And then we have people who completed maybe in like the first month or two. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see people's experiences uh, based on where they are in the course. Uh, someone wrote in and said, I was part of your last Finding Your Person program and just wanted to share. It worked. I gave someone a chance I would have filtered out before. And we've been happily dating for a couple months now. Keep sharing your dating wisdom. That's amazing. That makes me so, so so happy. It says, so glad you're doing this course again. It transformed my dating and how I was viewing dating. I'm 100% um, I'm 100% sure I will find my person, but doing this course helped me realize that I was putting way too much pressure on dating in order to have a kid. So this person actually decided they're going to be a single mom, have a kid on their own, and then find a person without that pressure of having a kid. That's amazing because, you know, I think a big part of it, like you said, of course, we want everyone to walk out on the street after doing this program and find that per- find their person. But we cl- clearly can't control that 100 percent. But I think it's such progress to even just have these shifts. So the way you talk about dating, the way you approach dating, the fact that you can recognize pressures you're putting on it. And, yeah. you know, we're going into this in this episode. There's really no right way. There's no one right way to do modern dating and relationships. And, you know, we're going one step further of three people raising a child and doing it a different way. We love that people are having these revelations at all steps of the process. And, you know, UA and I are just so excited to bring this back to people. So June 20th is the date. Go to findingyourperson.com to get on the wait list. We are releasing the video series that gives kind of a sneak peek into what this program is. 
we'll, you'll get a tip or two even by watching the video, but it will allow you to see like, is this something that would be a good fit for me? Because while we want everyone to do it, we want the people that also want to do it. So I think, yeah. you know, spots are limited. There's only two of us. So we want to make sure the people that are in there are really pumped to do it because, you know, like everything else in life, it's what you put in is what you'll get out. It's so important to sign up for the wait list because you will be getting some of this free content. It gives you an idea of what the course is. But like Julie said, you'll learn a thing or two. And also just a, to give you a better idea of what to expect. Mm. Now, I have a personal friend who's in, enrolled in the program right now. Mm. And he texted me and said, I am not nearly done because I'm still processing. And that happens too. You know, yeah. it's completely self-paced, self-guided. Uh, but we will do a call um, when you're enrolled in the program just to see how things are. And at the end of the program, you get to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with us or a one-on-two mm -hmm. with us <laughs> and just to tell us about <laughs> you your know. experience and feedback. So it's it's very valuable to have that one-on-one -on -one attention too. One-on-two attention. The theme is three. It's a group of three. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think um, I love that your friend is processing because sometimes it takes a while to process and we give unlimited access. So just because the cohort finishes up in the allotted time when things are released doesn't mean that you're going to like lose access. So take the yeah. time you need. Revisit sections. We all know that dating is a process. It doesn't just stop at, oh, I did the, I listened to these three sections and did a workbook. Now I'm good to go. So yeah, yeah. It's not like that. I wish we it was, our, but it's good. We, we poured our heart and soul into this program. I mean, I'm so proud of mm -hmm. what we created. So if this is not something that we take lightly and we wouldn't be relaunching it if we didn't feel completely behind it and just really believed in the information yep and this will be our fourth cohort so findingyourperson.com that's the website to go to and oh my gosh i like i just there's no transition for this but julie you were just in austin and you saw some dateable yes. fam yes. while you were there please do tell who you met oh my god i saw Okay, how many guests? Let me think. I saw a bunch of past guests. So I saw Kat Harris, who mm -hmm. was one of our favorites from um, in season. It was season 11, episode five, Sexless in the City. That was her episode. And so I met up with her. I met up with another past guest that was a friend of mine from um, San Francisco, but she was anonymous, so I won't reveal her name. <laughs> and then I, my best friend was there also staying in the Airbnb with me. And she was a past guest. Oh, yeah. She as was well. on it. Yes. And oh, was God. that it? I'm like, was there another past guest? A I... uh, singer. Oh, my God. Yes. And then this is the best story. So you and I went to South by Southwest in 2019. We mm -hmm. went to the podcasters meetup and we met this guy that was in a band in Austin and he was telling us that he needed to be on our podcast to talk about dating as a musician so he was season eight episode 11 Whoa, dating so rhythm ago. and blues yeah this one was one of the ones for a while ago and this is the best story. So I didn't like plan to meet up with this guy. We were staying in the Airbnb and there was this music venue nearby, the Continental mm -hmm. Club, I believe it was called. And my boyfriend is a huge live music fan. So mm. of course, part of going to Austin is you listen to live music along with eat tacos and barbecue, which we also did. <laughs> and um, $100 of barbecue later, which was way too much, side note. <laughs> We totally did not order correctly. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Took advantage, though. We, I saw this uh, venue, and it was right next to our Airbnb. So I looked it up, and who is the headliner? It is Donovan Amazing. Keith. And I was like, how do I recognize that name? And immediately <laughs> I remembered he was on our podcast. So he was season eight, episode 11, Dating Rhythm and Blues. And UA and I had met him at South by Southwest in Austin in 2019 at a podcaster's meetup. So while I didn't actually get to catch up with this guest, I did hear him live which was almost better. He had this one 
I was like, I think you we might need to get a back on the podcast. He I think we should did this like set. It wasn't really songs. It was kind of like a like like a I wanna say like a poetry reading type of thing. And it was about toxic mm. relationships. And I was oh, like Oh shit. I'm like, oh, I might need shit. to hit him up, be like, hey, I saw your performance. Wanna talk about that in more depth. <laughs> That's great. He was a headliner. Yeah, we can say he was amazing. We knew him when. Exactly. He had a lot of great. His stage energy was really good. My boyfriend also enjoyed it. And you know what? A small world, though. I was like, this is not what I was expecting. Such a small world. <laughs> what a productive trip. So that's four. In addition past to guests, going four past yeah. guests. Yes, I did go for a wedding, which was also wonderful. But four past guests. So this is my other like quick Austin side note. Um, mm. I was asking, like, how is dating in Austin? Because, you know, I'm very curious. And Who are you asking? The Some of the past guests that I met up with that okay, lived there, it. the two of them. And this is a sample size of two, so we're not going that <laughs> big. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, like, put out a poll in Austin, like, as people walked by asking them, so what's the dating scene like? This was just right, in right. conversation with a couple people. So Kat had moved from New York and mm-hmm. she had a very interesting take, like, because she, you know, part of her whole story is that she's Christian, like you said. So she was like, oh, like, it's awesome. Everyone here is Christian, pretty much. And then my oh. other friend was like, you know, it's kind of weird. And she was, like, actually raised religious. So it's not, you know, that she's against this. But she lived in San Francisco where religion doesn't really come up that often. Mm-hmm. And she said that she sees on dating profiles all the time, like swipe left if you don't go to church. That's like very prominent. So, you know, to each their own. No judgments here, but I just oh. wanted to call it out because it is definitely not something I've seen before in the locations it's a religious I've been. city. Interesting. I did not pick up on that. I really thought it was a city of transplants from california and new york which there are yeah but and i'm yeah, sure it's not core, everyone but the fact that yeah, she saw that you see pretty more prominently of and that was something she had never seen before in san right, francisco right. and then kat was saying like in new york it was always like people were never going to church or they were no you know um agnostic or even atheist so it was just very interesting that it was just so much more prominent and you know we we've been doing this long enough that There's definitely themes that persist over all the major cities, for sure. I think the basic struggles of modern dating are not that different place to place. But there are nuances city to city, for sure, of like the makeup of who's there and just the dynamics as a whole. It's still the South. Yeah, End exactly. of the day, you know, no matter how liberal it is, it's still the South. Oh, my so God. That makes a lot of sense. We saw like no guns past this point sign. <laughs> wow it's very fun wow. but anyways it was a fun trip overall it was f- just a different world a little you know there were some things yeah. that felt very at home for me and then other stuff i'm not used to seeing signs about leaving your guns past a certain point <laughs> <laughs> that's texas for you Woohoo! well um f- fun always fun catching up with old guests yeah and, and seeing them perform live music you know Yes, and getting the updates from them. This is why we, part of what we love about doing this podcast is we create a community after we have someone on our show. So they become part of the dateable family and then we feel like we get to visit them all over the world sometimes. And this episode will definitely give you, anyone listening, a, I don't know, food for thought yeah. about what growth could look like for you and something in this interview we talk about is what is normal what is normal can we redefine what normal is instead of saying something is normal or abnormal or non-traditional and traditional maybe we just call it what it is yeah you're in a three-parent family you're in a multi-parent family you're in a two-parent family though none of them is more normal than the other Mm -hmm. it's just we're calling them differently by what they are yeah what i love about this as someone that you know is leaning now towards having kids, but, you know, still a little concerned. There's still Mm -hmm. some things that don't make me like, like, I'm not ready today, right? So Mm -hmm. what I love about this is that you do it your way. I think my biggest concerns with motherhood and parenting and family is that 
I'll lose myself and you know, that will become my whole world and not that you shouldn't put your kid as a priority, but like, that's a fear of mine that I'll lose like all sorts of my own identity. And it was really reassuring to hear like, and we've heard this from other people too, that just because that's what you're fed on Instagram and what the media portrayal of being a mom is, you decide how it works for Mm -hmm. you. It doesn't mean that you're like less of a parent because you do it differently. Like it doesn't mean there's less love there for your child. So yeah, yeah, I think that was really nice to hear that you can do it all if you do it in a way that works for you. 